Okay. Uh, first, I would like to thank Thomas for the invitation. It's great to be here to present our research result, and also it's great to have uh, so different research presented and exciting research presented. So I'm so glad to be here. And uh, let me, I'm the last one before your launch, so I'm going to be fast. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about porous materials. and. Uh, two types of porous material I'm going to talk about. One is metal calcogenide, so that is crystalline metal calcogenide composition and uh, with porous in there. And the second project I'm going to talk about is the synthetic design of new metal organic framework materials. So let's look at those two porous materials. So the first type of porous materials with the goal, our research is to integrate the porosity with the semiconducting property. So you either have a semiconducting material or porous material, but in this project, we want to combine both in one material. So that's what we do. And uh, when we talk about crystalline material, we, it reminds us about zeolite as a mineral on Earth, not on Mars. I'm not sure if we have this on Mars or not, but on Earth, we have this crystalline porous material. We call it zeolite. Zeolite are four connected three-dimensional aluminum silicate, silicate and which uh, has a low framework density and pores, high surface area. So it is constructed from this silicon, tetrahedrally coordinated silicon and tetrahedrally coordinated aluminum. Those tetrahedral centers connect together to form a three-dimensional network. As you can see from here, this is a zeolite A we are now in industry. So each of these corners represent a tetrahedral center. So those tetrahedral centers are linked together through oxygen bridge to give us a three-dimensional network. So what we try to do here is to mimic this zeolite chemical composition, but improve, but, but uh, in put the semiconductivity into it. So conceptually, what we try to do is to do a triple substitution. So we try to replace silicon with germanium or tin, replace aluminum with gallium or indium, to replace oxygen with sulfur or selenide to synthesize those semiconducting porous material. So that's what we try to do. And by using right reaction conditions, so we, my student did a lot of work, and then finally we found a good condition that can give us all different zeolite type of material, but with those different chemical compositions. So this actually, uh, zeolite, zeolite this, some of those are sodalite structure, some are same as zeolite structure, but uh, some are different. So when we look at the structure building, you, oh, first, uh, those materials have high surface area, just like zeolite. So the surface area of this material, like this gallia, gallia, germania, sulfide composition, is 807. This is comparable to zeolite type of material. But we have sulfur, metal sulfur selenide in there. And when you look at the chemical composition of this material, you can see you have this different diverse composition, but also the building units are actually are flexible. So for example, the basic building units of those material are those super tetrahedral clusters. So those super tetrahedral clusters are fragments of zinc blend type structure. So this metal located in the middle, so so far around it, tetrahedrally cold in the metal. So if you have two metal layers, T2, but the whole cluster serve as a pseudo tetrahedral atom. So as a big tetrahedral atom, and you have a T2, two metal layers, T3, three metal layers, T4, four metal layers. So prior to our work, the largest the super tetrahedral cluster synthesized and characterized by single crystal is T4, and we moved to T5 and T6. You can see T5, T6 are much bigger. So T5 have a 35 metal cation in there. T6 has a 56 metal cation, 84 sulfur anion. All those structures are characterized by single crystal analysis. So we will say this is the largest uh, quantum dot characterized by single crystal analysis. So this material actually can be put together just like a one pseudo tetrahedral atom from zeolite type of materials. You can tune the 
size of this super tetrahedral cluster by control the metal the metal charge on it. So you can see in here, if we want to get the T2, we have plus four metal in there. If we want T3, we introduce the plus three. If we want T4, we introduce the low charge of the cation. And if we want to have a T2, T5, you introduce all those plus four and the plus two into the system. The reason for this, that is because on this cluster, you can see the so far have a different coordination, coordination environment. So one is two coordinated on the edges and the corners, one is three coordinated on the faces, and in the middle, you have a four coordinated so far in the middle. That's why you need to introduce a different metal with a different charge to satisfy the local charge environment. So that's what we did. And uh, also, with those negative charge the cluster, we can introduce different cations. Those cations, like lithium, sodium, are hydrate cations. And uh, those cations can move very fast. So this actually, this material give a fast ion conductivity. Actually, it, it was the fastest one among those crystalline uh, so porous materials. So th actually, that's why it, ha it can have different applications. So for example, because we have a semiconducting property and the porosity, that's why this material can be used as a photocatalytic material. And we have this water directly in the pores of this material with more active size because of this high surface area. So we can actually use this material to convert water to get hydrogen. And also, this material show very high uptake for carbon dioxide. So the, uh, the uptake capacity for this semiconducting porous material actually are similar as MOF. Actually, some, for some MOF, this is even better than some MOF. So this number is quite impressive. However, we have semiconducting properties. So that's why those material, we can introduce a different metal into the channel and use this material as a photocatalytic material to convert carbon dioxide to methane. And I think we have other chemical species. This is why this yield is very, very low. However, at that time, we can only get characterized methane. I think we have other chemical species in the system. So we are working on this still. And also, we can use this material as a porous host to host the different nanoparticles. For example, in this case, we introduced the sulfur doped nickel hydroxide into the channel of this material, and this material can be used as efficient catalyst, electron catalytic material for oxygen evolution reaction. So you can see that's very impressive here. So we introduced the fluoride, so we developed a developed this fluoride assistant cation stripping method. You can see we introduced sodium fluoride and the nickel chloride. With those both, the fluoride will strip out the germanium from our framework. And then the nickel in the system will incorporate it to this sulfur to form a nickel sulfur bond. At the same time, well, the fluoride actually through hydrolysis give us OH group. And this OH group is the one bonding with the nickel to form nickel hydroxide particle. So we can control the size of this nickel hydroxide by control the fluoride species and also different concentration. So this material actually show impressive electron catalytic properties for oxygen evolution. For example, it have very, very low over potential, only 212, much better than uranium oxide, and also have a low uh, typhus slope and a high active, uh, high active uh, surface area. So this is an impressive material. Now I would like to switch gears and talk about metal organic framework material. This is another type of porous material I would like to present. So metal organic framework material, as we know, are from a constructed, constructed from metal, metal cluster and linked with a different organic functional ligand. So those uh, material actually can have all different applications. So they are studied for those different applications. And we are focused on this gas separation and the gas absorption. 
So our overall objective is to synthesize or functionalize the metal organic flammable materials with desirable chemical and geometric features for gas absorption and separation. So here we developed the different strategies, but I won't have time to cover this. I'm going to focus on our strategy on pore space partitioning. So as we know, when we have a porous material, not necessarily the larger, the better. We would like to have a suitable pore size. So here, with this, those different strategy, we can divide this larger pore into different domains at the same time introduce different chemical functionality into the pore. So let's look at the strategy. So the strategy was first developed by the synthesis of CPM5. So those materials actually, when you look at the structure building unit, it has this large pore with 24 Indian in there. This large pole, and then we have this small pole trapped inside the larger pole to give us the sphere in sphere structure, uh, uh, cage in cage. We call it the cage in cage structure because it's a three dimensional cage structure. And then the same design strategy can be used in different chemical system. For example, in the case cobalt, we still have two different structure building units. So we have this uh, panel dimer. This panel dimers are linked together with this TPT ligand to form this small cube octahedral cage. Then we have this V-shaped dimer. These dimers are linked together to give us this larger rhombic cube of octahedral cage. So small cage, see the inside the big cage to give us another cage in cage structure topology. So you can imagine you can use all those space between and inside the cages. And uh, you may wonder how those cage in cage structure are formed. Actually, what we have is this BTC. So the BTC in this CPI24 cobalt case, you, they use this two functional group and the third one called all the world to define the metal cata in the outside cage. Then in the CPI5, the two functional group help form this larger cage with the third one pulled inward to define the position of the cata inside the cage. But in both of those cases, you need to have this uh, tri-functional group, right? So this uh, concept was also demonstrated in Fujita's work in molecular system. So this is not three-dimensional. So this concept works, but there are limitations. And uh, Omar Yagi called this uh, uh, Russian nasty doll concept. There are some this concept in there, but not uh, completely the same. Okay, so in this case, the limitation is that we need to use this uh, polyfunctional group. But in morph synthesis, as we know, most of the morph materials are synthesized with this bifunctional ligand. So can we partition those kind of structure? So for example, male 88 is a well-known uh, morph material with flexibility in there and a large swelling effect. So the pole size is 20, is too big for gas application. So that's what uh, we, when we look at the structure, so can we partition this larger cage? When we look at the structure, you can see you have a six of this uh, trimer on the hexagonal ring. Each trimer provides all oh, three open metal sides. So when you look at the structure in more detail, we found that those three trimers are set on one plane, three above and three below. So when you look at here, each of these trimers give you three open metal sides, and when you look at one particular channel, you have three open metal sides pulled into this channel. So what we think, okay, we can divide this channel into different domains by introducing a ligand and introduce a metal. So what the, uh, our design strategy was to introduce this nitrogen-containing ligand, so the nitrogen coordinate with this open metal size here, then carboxylic group link with the metal introduced to divide this big channel into different domains. Indeed, it happened. This structure was solved by single crystal analysis. However, the metal itself in here is not that stable. So then what we use is this TPT ligand. So this TPT is much more stable, and with this C3 symmetry in there, it can coordinate 
with these three metal sides in the channel to divide the channel into different domains and also bring different functionality into the channel. So that's a great achievement. And we, the, when you look at this material, this is before petition, this is after petition. So not only that, when you look at the material, we can synthesize this material with a different ligand, different partition ligand. So you can tune the pole size and the channel in different ways. And when you look at this C along C direction, so this, not only you divide this into three different ports, and also you chop this strict C channel into different domains by this TPT ligand in there. So basically, each of this cylinder, the length of this cylinder is determined by the cross-linking ligand. So you can tune the, the length of this cylinder and also the diameter fit with the partition ligand. So you have all different, uh, uh, different uh, parameters to use to tune the material with the different uh, properties. And, uh, we first did this with nickel materials. The carbon dioxide uptake was improved dramatically because you actually divided this channel into different domains with more functionality into the material. Then we saw the oh, which the work on with magnesium. So why magnesium? Because at that time, with MOF 74 was the, was the best material for carbon dioxide uptake. Then people found the magnesium was the best among those different MOF 74 material. So we, we would like to have this magnesium in our system. That's why we did this anyway, even though we know from general chemistry, magnesium love oxygen or nitrogen. But we tried anyway, turn out and the confined environment, we can indeed get this magnesium and partition this channel into different domains. So when we, when we do that, you can see the carbon dioxide uptake will improve dramatically. So you can see it actually better than MOF74 in low temperature. So you can see in here, pure magnesium only 36 for carbon dioxide uptake. Then with vanadium magnesium, it, it improved to 95, but both without partitioning ligand. With partitioning ligand, you can see it improved from 36 to 194, then from 85 to 232. It's a great improvement with this partitioning ligand. And then we actually did it with different metals, different cross-linking ligand, and the different partition ligand. A large family of material was synthesized. When we look at our material with those reported in literature that I labeled as a star, you can see this is more of 74, the second one. Even so, our material have a comparable carbon dioxide uptake when we compare with more of 74. However, the heat of absorption of our material for carbon dioxide is much, much lower than MOF74. Why? Because MOF74 has all those open metal sides that interact stronger with the carbon dioxide. However, our material has no open metal sides because our open metal sides are occupied by this partition ligand already. But we still have a very high carbon dioxide uptake on this material. So that will be great for regeneration of this material and re reuse those materials. So in addition to use TPT, we can also use different uh, metal organic metal ligand. You can see this metal complex, and with this, uh, as long as you have a C3 symmetry, you can use it to partition this channel into different domains. So we introduce a different functionality, and the different strategies were developed. And also, when people talk about MOF, people think, oh, those material may be not stable. Actually, recently, we used this different chemical species, tested the stability. For example, chromine here. If you have a chromine in the system, that material can be very stable in, in acidic, strong acidic, and strong basic conditions. So some of this chemical composition can bring high stability into metal organic flammable materials. And uh, you can see this one, it cover a large pH range and this open opportunity for using this material as a catal catalytic material in solution. So also we combine the core chemistry with the MOF chemistry. 
as we know, in cold for chemistry, you use this boronic acid through hard radiation, you can get the cough one. And my, my student proposed, said, we can use this. So by using this, you can get this, you can just get this trimer, and this isoelectronic structure with this TPT, so we should be able to use this material to partition the channel. The good thing is you introduce Lewis acid into the system. And when we first we try to synthesize this ligand, we cannot. The reason could be because we have both Lewis acid and Lewis base in the molecule. And what we did, then directly you introduce this monomer into the channel of this material, and then you actually achieve both goals. You get this molecule inside the channel, and also you get this trimer in there. And uh, I think the reason is because the nitrogen coordinated with the open metal side, it helped the material formation. So that is a good thing about the cooperative you know, action in a molecule. And of course, we tried this absorption of ammonia for this material because of the Lewis acid properties. And also, we also tried other gases. As, as the, the results are all great, actually. So in addition to use this C3 symmetry ligand, we also use this uh, uh, bifunctional ligand to partition this channel. So in this case, we actually occupy two of the three open metal sites. So we have the both world. We have open metal sites, one open metal sites among the three, then we occupy this, and also we have this partitioner in fact. And as a result, this material indeed have very, very high uptake for acetylene. As we know in industry, acetylene storage is a problem, so we may be able to use this material for that application. And actually, when you look at the result, this material actually breaks several records for those different gases for storage, for uptake capacity. And of course, we want to use this material for separation in addition to st for storage. And uh, because the petroleum product comes with the impurity, and uh, right now, industry doing it with uh, low temperature and uh, through distillation. So this energy, this costs a huge amount of energy. So what we try to do, can we use this more for material for those different gas separation? Of course, in this case, we would like to have this material with a high uptake capacity for C2H6, so that we can let the C2H4 pass, because C2H4 is what we want. So that's actually, we call it inverse selectivity. So usually more of material have a high uptake capacity for C2H4, not for C2H6. And, but our material is special because we don't have open metal size. We partition this channel into different domains. And turn out this material have inverse selectivity for C2H6. So we indeed can let the C2H4 pass and, uh, and stop the C2H6 in the channel for purification. And recently, we use this bi-isosteric replacement strategy. So that stra this strategy is well known in medicinal industry for different, uh, for different um, medicine applications. So what we, uh, basically what they are doing is to replace this benzene ring with a different aliphatic group. So what we did is we just replaced the phenyl group in our mouth material with those different groups. So similar strategy. And this gave us opportunity to fine tune the channel and also fine tune the properties of the material. So by this way, actually you can see, we can tune the channel from 4.6 atrium, 4.3, 2.9, .9, depending on the ligand, you really have a family of material with a different pole size in those different range. And those material actually have a great absorption, uptake capacity for carbon dioxide and acetylene are both impressive. You can separate this. So you have a big time, a great time to separate those two gases by using this material. Okay, I think I rushed this through, and uh, you can see by using this uh, partition strategy, we indeed uh, can synthesize a large family of materials with a different functionality for hopefully for different application. And uh, I would like to thank my student, postdoctor, collaborators for their hard work and undergraduate students also participated in this research. And also this uh, 
MOF project was is funded by DOE still, and the SOFA project is funded by NSF. I forgot to put NSF in here. <laughs> but so uh, I would like to finally thank you very much for your attention, and I uh, hope to take any questions you have. Thank you.